Emily from Naptime Creations and I'm here again to share another fun sewing tutorial with you tonight. So um, I'm excited to get started and we're just going to of course chat a few moments here at the beginning um, while we wait for people to join and notice that we're started. So um, anyway tonight we're going to be um, sharing and sewing um, some boys mesh shorts and these are perfect my boys live in these all summer long they're just like sport short essentially but um, they're homemade they're easy you can make them reversible if you want so that they can wear different colors um, the ones I'm making tonight aren't necessarily going to be reversible but they're definitely going to be super cool so in the um, comments uh, above me for this video you can grab the free pattern for this. It comes in sizes 2 through 10 um, boys and um, it's a great free pattern. Uh, there's a pants version and a shorts version and today we're going to be sharing and sewing the shorts version. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, make sure this is posted on my timeline so that um, other people can join us and sew with us tonight. So if you're around, I'd love for you to tell me where you're from, what you're up to tonight, if you've eaten dinner, and did you have a good dinner. I'm drinking my morning coffee. Again, I'm here in Hong Kong and it's 9 a.m. So I'm working on waking up with my um, morning coffee, but tell me what you had for dinner and what you guys are up to tonight. So I'd love to hear um, what people are doing and how your evening is going. So I'm um, just checking in here this morning and um, of course this always um, can't connect when I'm trying to do this. I also have to tell you we took every Father's Day I take a picture for my husband and um, a Father's Day picture and we took this year's and it turned out so cute. So I'm going to show you in just a few minutes um, what it looks like because I love this year's and it turned out so, so great. Um, the kids did a good job and actually smiled, which isn't always the case. So, um, yeah, so that that is great. So I'm going to show you what it looks like and um, I'm just pinning this to the top of my page so that people who are um, checking out can find what's going on. So yeah, again, we're going to be sewing some boys mesh shorts, which are perfect for boys to live in all summer long and are great for just um, play wear and you can make them different colors or different, um, you know, really however you want. So there are really, my boys live in them all summer. So um, but before we get started on that, this is what I want to show you. Didn't that turn out so good? So this every year for my husband, we take a picture for Father's Day. And um, so this is what we took this year. And I love how it turned out. So I bought several years ago, I bought these letters at um, I think Hobby Lobby. And um, Anyway, so it's so cute. Can you guys see? So this is going to be a Father's Day present. My husband's not watching because he's at work. But I'm so excited about this picture. And we also got this one, which I think is super cute too. But I didn't blow it up because the A is a little funny on there. So anyway, what do you guys do for Father's Day? Do you have any great ideas or um, things that's something that you always do any tips for Father's Day or um, yeah tell me tell me what your go-to Father's Day gift is so oh thanks we think it's really cute too um, yeah so I don't have any that's like kind of what I've done every year um, <laughs> Dania that's okay I like the emojis they were all happy ones so we'll take it um, but yeah so I, I just was showing that what I have, what I took for Father's Day, this picture, my husband has a um, frame on his desk at work and every Father's Day I just take a new picture that we replace and put in it. And um, this year we have three kids, so that's super exciting because um, our daughter, well, I guess our daughter joined us right before Father's Day last year. So, um, but I just was asking what, 
Um, what do you do for Father's Day? What's, um, what's something that, yeah, that you guys, do you have like a go-to Father's Day gift or, um, or do you do something different every year? So, uh, yeah, tell me what, tell me what your Father's Day gift is or what, what you like to do for Father's Day. So, um, yeah, I just am having trouble with my internet, but back here it seems to always act up when I'm trying to do it. So anyway, if you're just joining, I'm glad you're here. We're going to be sewing some boys' mesh shorts. I'm Emily, um, and I vlog at Naptime Creations, and this free pattern can be grabbed in the link above here, and they're shorts or pants. This is the, actually the pants pattern, and I just cut it lower, but um, it's the same pattern. You just make it longer or shorter. So, um, anyway, Ellen, if you're watching, can you send me the direct link to this video um, by clicking on the timestamp? I can't seem to be able to grab it on my computer. So, my sister's helping me out with um, some of the sharing aspects of this video, and I am seeming to have some issues with um, grabbing it. So Ellen, if you're watching, could you grab me that video or that um, the link, the direct link to this video so I can um, just share it real quick. Um, anyway, so um, yeah, so tell me what you're up to, what's going on tonight, what did you guys have for dinner, where are you, any of those things. Um, I'm in Hong Kong and so it's 9 a.m. here. I'm drinking my morning coffee, and I'm excited to sew with you guys this morning. So um, I'd love to hear where you're watching from and what you're up to this evening and kind of what's going on with you um, as we get started. So we're gonna, I'm gonna start by cutting out the fabric and telling you just kind of um, along the way how I'm sewing it. So. Earlier this week, I sewed a girl's tank top on Andrea's notebook, the Facebook page, and it was a huge success, and um, it was really fun, and my daughter got two new tank tops out of it, so um, that was super exciting. Um, all right, so I think that's all I'm going to do with that for now. So um, anyway, I... Um, just a second, my sister is, I don't know. It's, Ellen, I'm having trouble with it. Love the internet. Um, so this is my sewing room and um, my sewing area where I do most of my work. I don't usually cut right here. Um, I usually cut over on that side, but um, for now, I'm just cutting and sewing in one spot. So those of you who just joined, we're going to be sewing um, some boys' mesh shorts, which are perfect for your boys to live in. My boys, after school is out, do not like to dress up unless they absolutely have to, so they pretty much live in these kind of sport mesh shorts, which you could totally buy, but um, I like making them, and they're pretty easy to do, too. So. If you're joining me, you can go ahead and um, maybe tell me where you're watching from. If you have boys that could actually, um, you could actually use this on. Um, so I hope you'll be able to sew these. But one thing I wanted to show you before we get started last time is this is my Father's Day gift to my husband. And it's um, the, uh, I just take a new picture every year and then he has a frame on his desk at work that he does. So this is this year's picture. It turned out so cute. We're really excited to give it to him. And I just purchased these letters at Hobby Lobby. Um, and so I just take pictures of the kids holding them. So we have this one too. I didn't make it big because, you know, it's a little complicated to get kids to smile and hold the letters correctly. So April, you should sew because your boys would eat these up. But I know, isn't this so, so cute? If only this letter was perfect. So here were the two really good ones. I went with this one because the letter was a little bit, um, the letters were a little bit better. So anyway, there we go. Happy Father's Day. Hopefully my husband doesn't see this, but I don't think so because he's at work. So um, anyway, that should remain a secret 
until for the next couple weeks. So I'd love to hear what you do for Father's Day. If you have any um, any ideas that are go-tos. And yes, I did. Thanks, Ellen. Thank you. Um, so, um, yeah, what is your go-to Father's Day gift? Do you do the same thing every year? Do you do different things? Um, tell me what kinds of things that, that your husband likes or doesn't like or what you like to get, give, and just let me know. So I'm going to get started. I have, um, again, we're sewing boys' mesh shorts. You can grab the pattern um, in the link of this video. Um, it should have links to my pattern group for support and also for this video. I've traced it onto um, tissue because I don't like to cut up the paper patterns. It's just too much work to print every time. So um, I'm gonna be cutting out and we need to, because these are lined shorts, we're gonna have to cut out two of everything. So I'm gonna use this um, blue mesh kind of as the outside and then this light blue sport liner um, from the inside. And I probably should have posted where I got this fabric because I had a bit of a hard time finding like this sort of um, slippery but yet stretchy kind of lining fabric um, and um, so anyway I just I had to like figure out where to get it so I did order it I'll add the link to the video later I have to actually go back and think about where I can't remember where I ordered this from, but I ordered it online and it's great, it's stretchy, it's slippery, it's gonna be perfect under shorts and be like that sporty um, feel. So we're gonna cover it in the dark blue mesh and then we're gonna line it with the light blue and I'm gonna try and do like a stripe down the side like that's kind of um, that. Hi Marissa, glad you could join us. I'm so happy you're um, here tonight. We're gonna um, start cutting. So I'm gonna start with the back. And I need to cut um, two backs of the lining and two backs of the um, outer one. Now I'm going to start with the lining because actually, and so I have to figure out which way does the stretch go and then cut the stretch. You want the stretch to go across the shorts, not up and down the shorts, like side to side. Um, because when you're moving, that's that's the direction you generally want in a t-shirt or in shorts you want the stretch to be going from side to side so I'm actually making these for a friend um, because my boys were given tons of hand-me-down um, shorts and from their cousins who are older than them so last summer they wore several handmade ones that I had done but this summer they're wearing all hand-me-downs so um, uh, so anyway, so I asked a friend if her son could use any shorts, and she said yes. So um, so anyway, we're going to sew some boys' mesh shorts, and we're also kind of talking Father's Day gift ideas. Does anyone have any brilliant ones that you want to share that either you give to your own father or you do for your husband um, on Father's Day? I'm always... I do the same thing every year. I give the picture of my kids holding the letters. Um, and But, you know, sometime it might be nice to mix things up a little bit. I don't know. I probably never will, but uh, it might, <laughs> the idea is interesting. So, anyway, if you have any great Father's Day gift ideas, I'd love for you to share them here. Although, you probably don't want to give any, way, give any secrets away if your husband is, is around. Mine's at work this morning, so I don't think that my secret will be given away. Although, when you, gave, when you give the same thing every year, he knows what he's getting. He just doesn't know what this year's version looks like. Um, so that's our surprise. But I, funny, funny uh, story. So we took the picture last Thursday when my husband was um, working late one night so when the kids came home from school I said we're gonna take the picture for daddy Father's Day's not for a while but it's a good day to do it the weather's good you guys are all in a good mood so we took the picture it turned out great everything was fine and then later when my five-year-old talked to um, when my five-year-old was talking to my husband he's like 
dad, I love you. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> and, and my husband was like, uh, did you take Father's Day pictures today? Because Max is wishing me Father's Day several weeks early. So our secret actually wasn't really a secret because um, <laughs> Max wished him Happy Father's Day in mid-May, but because we had taken the Father's Day pictures that day. So not really a secret, but again, he hasn't seen it. He doesn't know what it looks like, and hopefully we'll be able to save that for actual Father's Day. So, you know, five-year-olds and secrets, actually any kids and secrets, is not really the best situation. So generally I just try not to tell them, tell them anything that I don't want to be told, um, you know, to the world, because it probably will be spread around until they tell their teacher everything at school. So, um, yeah, so don't tell them if I don't want them to say it. So, yeah, so we just take um, a Father's Day picture every year. We use the the white letters that I bought it, um, at Hobby Lobby, and, you know, that works out well. So, all right, so I've cut two of the back lining, and now I'm cutting two front. So pants generally are made up of four pieces, two front pieces, two back pieces, and we're going to make ours out of eight pieces because we're going to have these pants be lined. So um, if you get a chance to click through to the blog post from several years ago, there's a picture tutorial showing you how to um, put these pants together. So I'll be generally following those steps, although I'm not looking at the tutorial. So if I do it out of order, it's just because I'm going off the top of my head doing this and, um, you know, and talking at the same time. So I might uh, confuse things, but I'm going to try and follow the same order generally. So, okay, so I've cut the lining cut. Now what I'm going to try to do with these shorts is to make like a sport stripe down the side. So I'm going to... In, before I cut my outer fabric, this is the lining fabric, um, before I cut the outer fabric, I'm going to trim an inch off each side of the fabric paper, okay? So I'm just going to try and do this together because that will make, um, then we'll cut a two inch wide strip of what we want to be the stripe and sew it together. So. I'm going to use my fabric scissors to cut the tissue paper because I don't have any scissors back here and I don't want to run out on the video. But generally, I wouldn't do this because I'm pretty fanatical when it comes to my fabric scissors and my paper scissors. But I just did it. So I cut a strip off and the directions on the blog also tell you about how to do this if you want to add a stripe. But so we're cutting off the side of the pattern before we cut our outer one to um, add a stripe down the side. Kind of that sporty look where, you know, the mesh pants have a, a stripe down the side. So, excuse me, I'm drinking um, iced coffee. Oh, I know, Nadine, I'm sorry. I just, it's either that or I have to leave you to run out to the main room. So, I... Uh, I, I get pretty crazy on my fabric scissors, but um, have you seen those things on online where it's like people put a padlock through their fabric scissors and they keep the key so no one can use them but then? I don't, I haven't done that yet. The kids are pretty good about staying away from the fabric scissors, but um, if it came to that. So this is um, just some blue mesh, and I'm going to... Um, use this for the outer part of my shorts. And I've trimmed an inch off the outside part, like that will be down here, of um, that part of the pants because I'm going to add a blue stripe of fabric from the lining um, there to kind of give a little more detail and hopefully make it look a little bit more like uh, store-bought, you know, I love homemade, but I kind of like it to look like I bought it, I didn't make it, 
Um, I think for me, for my kids to be to to not know I made it or to think it's just as good as something they could buy, is um, really important. So, um, yeah, cutting fabric uh, can be tricky. I um, I've messed up more than once, and you have to recut, and hopefully you have enough fabric. But, you know, they always say measure twice, cut once. And I'm kind of a measure once, cut twice kind of girl. So it doesn't always work out for me. But hopefully while I'm doing this live, we don't have any major cutting issues. So, all right. So this is a narrower pant piece now because we're going to add the stripe in a minute to this um, part of the pattern. And cutting down, cutting sitting down is so weird for me, but trying to stay in the video frame. All right, so there's our front piece. And um, Melissa, the lining fabric is, is kind of like a sport lining. It's stretchy, but it's also kind of that silky lining fabric um, and I will put the link to where I ordered it in the video after I finish. I should have put that right away but I didn't even think about that. So the mesh is just from a fabric market here in Hong Kong so I don't actually know what it is. Um, I just picked it up at, the, at a market but I do know where I ordered the lining after I look it up. I don't know off the top of my head but um, I just kind of, I think I googled like um, sport lining and then ordered from, I ordered it online and I've been really pleased with it so far. So it's, it's stretchy enough but also like kind of that slippery enough fabric so that you can be really active in it and it's, um, you know, stretchy enough for that. So anyway. Yeah, I'll add the link later um, when I go back and double check where I ordered it from. So, all right, so I'm just gonna cut another one of the main front fabric. This is the um, front piece here, I think. And then we will almost be ready to start sewing. So I'm gonna use today my serger and my Janome sewing machine, but you could sew all of this on just a regular sewing machine. You don't need a serger, but I have one, so I'm going to use it. So, um, all right. So we've got, all right, so there is the pieces cut. And then I'm gonna cut um, the stripes to go down the side out of the lining fabric. So um, I just have to, um, let's see. Um, check out this one thing. And then we're gonna get sewing. So uh, the lining fabric, I cut one inch off the front and the back of my shorts. So I know that I want my stripe to be at least two inches and I need a seam allowance, so I'm gonna cut it about two and a half inches and just do a really narrow seam allowance um, along the side. So I'm gonna cut, I need it to be the length of the shorts, which I can measure here on my board. It's about 18 inches. I'll cut it a little bit long and um, if you're watching this and at the top of the video it says um, shared by, um, I won't be able to see your comments. So if you have a question or a comment as I go along and you'd like me to answer it, please make sure that you are um, looking at the original video. So that means you need to see where it says shared by Naptime Creations video. You need to click through to the actual video to make sure that um, you're getting the original um, 
video and then and then I'll be able to see your comments. So if you can do that, that is that would be great and then I can answer as we go along any questions that you might have. So um, all right, so I'm gonna cut 18 inches. That's not long enough. Um, 18 inches by two and a half inches. And again, I'm gonna make sure that my um, stretch is kind of going from side to side. And this is just not gonna work for me, is it? Okay, well, we'll put it there. So, um, all right, so we wanna do the stretch from side to side. And um, sorry. Um, and then we're gonna cut it 18 inches. So I'm thinking if I just cut this long piece and then I can cut it in half and it will be, we need to cut two because we have two sides of the shorts. So, and this looks like it's gonna be a little tricky with it curling, but we'll try to do the best we can. So I'm gonna pop over and grab my rotary cutting um, ruler so I can just slice that off real quick. All right, so I said two and a half inches to make the stripe. And let's see, I'm gonna cut right down here and then cut it in half. Oops, and if you saw me on Monday, I mentioned that I need to change my blade. And did I change the blade since Monday? I did not. So my it's not the sharpest ruler. Um, again, if you have questions, you need to make sure that you're viewing on the original um, video and not on um, anything that at the top says shared by. Because if it says shared by I, and you're commenting on it, I won't see those comments until after I'm done. Um, you know, I will see them later, but I won't get a chance to see them now. So um, anyway, if you're just joining us, we are sewing some boys uh, mesh shorts, which are perfect for boys who just like to run around and wear comfortable clothes all summer, which is definitely uh, my two boys. So um, that's what we're working on this evening. All right, so, um, all right, so this is the back, I think. It's hard to even tell. Yeah, that's the back. I can tell because the um, inseam part is a little bit bigger on the back, okay? And I'm going to, hi, Rose. My daughter is, hi. you want to you wanna say hi? You say hi? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Rose likes to pop in and say hi when I'm sewing, and she's still wearing her pajamas. You can't be up there. Nope. Mommy's sewing. Still wearing her pajamas this morning. Um, all right, so I said I needed it about 18 inches. And perfect, we're gonna be able to get both of them out of the one. So, all right, so I'm going to line this up with right sides together, and this fabric is almost hard to see what's the right side. And then I'm just gonna sew the stripe. See, isn't that gonna look nice? I'm gonna sew the stripe in the side with the um, serger. Um, if you're doing this for the first time, I'd recommend pinning, but I'm um, trying to keep the video obviously moving along, and I have sewed this a few times. So I'm just gonna go along. I'm using a narrow seam allowance to put this stripe in because I really only added kind of a quarter inch to my, I don't think it likes sewing on this cutting mat, a quarter inch to the fabric. So you want to make sure you've got right sides together and going along and it looks like my stripe isn't quite long enough so we'll have to trim that. That's not ideal. I should have measured better. Um, all right, so then I'm going to sew the other stripe to the other side, trying to figure out right side, wrong side on this. Um, and 
again, we're going to line up and we're going to sew the stripe on this side. Okay? If you have any questions as I go along, please ask them. Um, I would be happy to answer if you're unsure about what I'm doing um, so that you can go back later and, um, you know, be able to put this together pretty easily. So, if you want to be able to save this to come back and um, watch it whenever you want, if you go ahead and hit share below this video, you'll be able to save it to your timeline and then you can come back and um, be able to watch this whenever um, you have time to sew it or whenever you want to look at it. So, um, yeah, the share button below will will post it to your timeline and then you'll have it for later. So. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Nicole. Uh, yeah, so, well, vice versa, whenever I want to cook, I go to all my friends' amazing food blogs. So, um, it works for all of us. All right, so now I'm taking a front piece. This is the back piece. It has the side stripe in. And, um, Diane, if you don't see the share, you might be in a group that you're unable to share to. So, at the top, where it says someone shared Naptime Creations video, just click on the link that says video and it'll take you to the original video, I think, and then you should be able to share. But the share button should be right below the video. Um, if it's not because you've opened another window, just kind of go back to the Naptime Creations timeline. Um, but there should be a share button below me. You might have to go back to my Facebook page to find it if, you're, if you've opened the video link. Sometimes I know that I don't always see it either um, in there. Also, if you're interested in finding out more about free patterns um, or more about any patterns, you can join my Facebook group. So that's an addition to my page. It's called the Naptime Creations Pattern Group and it's just a place for you to be able to share what you're making using my patterns and um, get, get asked questions. And I try to check in you know, about once a day and try to answer questions if I can. And But even if I don't get to answer it, there's always other people who do a good job of jumping in and answering questions. So if you're sewing and um, isn't that going to look fun? So there's our side stripe. And of course we're going to line this because otherwise this might be a little risque sport shorts. Um, but I really like the way putting a little stripe in the side just makes it that look that much um, more like a real pair of shorts. Okay, so I want to make sure here that I am lining up the top and the bottom correctly because I'd hate to, hate to sew them together upside down. But I'm just going to finish sewing the last um, side of the stripe in. Again, we're sewing right sides together. We're just putting in a stripe. You can, if you just want to make it simple, you can definitely do it without, um, without the stripe. Sorry, can you guys see? I just realized, am I covering it when I'm sitting here? Someone tell me if I'm blocking and you can't see because I don't want to be doing all this and you can't even see what I'm doing. Okay, so speak up if you can't see what I'm doing. If you have questions, please go ahead and ask. Um, if you're just joining, we're, we're sewing a pair of boys mesh shorts, like sport shorts for summer. We've just put in the stripe into both sides. So, looks cool, huh? All right, so now we're gonna finish the outer, this is the outer shell of the shorts, and then we're gonna put the lining on the inside. So, I now have, um, a back of shorts, the stripe, and a front side of the shorts. So we want to match. I got to think about this because I don't want to make any mistakes. I have to match the front um, kind of uh, front crotch seam with the um, front. Okay, so front to front. You can see how it kind of goes down and curved. And then on the back, we have back to back, okay? So then we'll have a front, and we'll have a back, and the stripe will be on the side, okay? So I'm going to sew those two 
seams. I know we talked about this before. I always feel weird saying the crotch seam, but I kind of don't know what else to say because the inseam is between the legs. But what would you call this top um, seam up here in the middle? If you have any uh, better words for me, go ahead and let me know. So, um, okay, so I'm going to use a 3 8 seam allowance now that I'm done with um, the, the stripe. I used a narrow seam allowance on the stripe because that was just kind of an add-in, but this pattern does have a 3 8 seam allowance for all the other seams. So I'm going to add, just do a little bit bigger seam allowance, and I am using light color serger thread on dark mesh, which means, oh, that's not a toy. That's not a toy. This is not a toy for my dog. Um, which means you probably will be able to see. Can you see? You can see the stitching a little bit, but actually this is really good for you because you can see very clearly where I stitched. Um, hopefully it'll just blend in with the lining that's light. Um, but I do not, one of my least favorite sewing tasks is changing the thread on my serger because it's never easy. For some reason, it always takes me like three or four tries. And sometimes I just have to leave it for like the night and then come back to it and say, I'll, I'll try you later because I can't handle you anymore. Rose, what do you want me to do with this? Yeah, this is yarn. Do you want a piece? Okay. Yesterday I was making a project using this twine. So she's finding bits of it around. Um, okay, so now we have the shorts are sewn together. We have the back side, we have the front side, we have the middle, which is the striped, okay? So open it up so that the stripes are on the side like they would be, and then we're going to sew the inseam here together. And I almost always put one pin lining the um, center seams so that I make sure those line up. So I've got one pin in the middle, and then I'm going to start from this side, and I'm just going to sew around, okay? And then our outer shorts will be um, ready and waiting to be put the liner in, okay? And there might be other ways to add the liner, but I'm going to show you how I do it. And you can tell me if you can think of other ways that it could be done as well. I'm sure there's several techniques for lining pants. I try to keep things pretty simple. Um, but okay, so let's turn this right side out. And we're starting to see that we have a pair of shorts coming together and they have a stripe on the side and um, right there. So Brielle, I'd love for you to make these. So these are um, pretty easy. If you have like a thicker mesh, you don't even have to line them. You could just add elastic and hem it, but you can see that mine is quite see-through. So I'm going to line them and you can make them reversible. The tutorial on the blog gives instructions for making these so they can actually flip them and wear them two different ways. Um, I've also done it using just two layers of mesh and then it's reversible mesh shorts. So, but now I have this cool sport lining and I'm going to be using that. So, all right, for the lining, I have to make sure I think through this. Um, we're not gonna sew it completely up. We're gonna sew it par partially through and then we're going to attach it to the shorts and finish showing it. So I have to just make sure I'm thinking about this because um, I, I don't want to mess this up for you guys. So you need to take um, one back and one front of the pants pattern, okay? So we're going to sew 
the outer edge of one inner or one one front and one back of the inner lining okay so I'm just gonna sew the long outside edge right sides together using a 3 8 seam allowance so again if you have any feedback on the free patterns that I offer I'm always looking to make them better so if um, you know you try one and there's a certain size that isn't perfect please let me know I would really like to improve and um, make sure they're as good as they can be so because I offer them free and I try to do a lot of them I haven't sewn every size I'll usually sew one of the smaller sizes and sew one of the larger sizes and if those fit then I generally assume that the sizes in the middle are pretty okay. Um, and a lot of times you'll notice the clothes that I sew for my kids are generally just play clothes. And so the fit doesn't need to be perfect because we're talking t-shirts and sport shorts. And um, you know, you're not so worried that the sport shorts fit exactly right because they're just play shorts and um, it doesn't have to be quite a perfectionist sort of thing so I, I am not obviously you can tell I don't sew for, for perfection I just sew for fun and so that my kids have clothes to wear And I love being able to share um, free patterns. Hi, Kyle is my brother. <laughs> it's probably not the most exciting video for him, but fun that he's checking in. So, um, all right, so now we have a front and a back sewed together and a front and a back sewed together. And we're gonna keep the legs separate for now. So you're gonna match up on just one side the inseam, okay? So from here, to the bottom leg and we're going to sew that so then we're going to kind of have two legs again this is the part that I kind of wish I was looking at the tutorial on my own blog but so someone who is looking at the tutorial on the blog tell me if I'm making a major mistake here because I'm trying to remember exactly how I did this and it has been a while since I sewed this pattern um, but I took a look at it earlier this morning and I think I can I'm remembering the steps correctly so um, all right so we're sewing the legs My brother's a vet, and he was actually just on real TV for his local news station um, talking about the work that he does with horses at the ranch where he works. So he's a little bit more professional with this live TV thing than I am, but um, <laughs> he's actually been on real TV. So I'll take Facebook, and um, he can take the real news. But um, all right, so we've got uh, pants here. Okay, so this is one leg and the other leg. and we also have the shorts, okay? So now we want to match. I have the front, the front facing up on my shorts. And I'm going to match right sides together, the outer pants with the inner pants, okay? So I'm also gonna find the front, okay? So you can tell the front because the back is the bigger um, rise in the back. So this one will go on this leg. So I'm gonna just kind of slide this inside, right sides together, right? Right sides together. And then I'm gonna turn that inside. I think that's correct. Uh, and so I've got the pant leg slid over right sides together I'm going to match the side seams and I'm going to pin 
the side seam, and then this one doesn't really have a side seam because I put that stripe in there. So, but I'm just going to put a pin on this other side. So we maybe I'm going to kind of slippery. I'm going to add a couple pins. Um, so we're going to be sewing the ends of the shorts together. <laughs> Thanks, Rielle. <laughs> I sometimes I get confused about right side, wrong side together, and I have definitely sewed things um, where then it's reversed, and I have to like think through what's the right side, what's the wrong side. Um, all right, so we're sliding this pant leg into the other one again, right side, wrong side, right sides together, and then the, the wrong side of the liner should be facing you, and I'm pinning this around. This will become the hem for the shorts, so that's super easy because you don't even actually have to really hem them. You just are going to sew this around and then flip it through and then that kind of becomes the bottom of the shorts. Um, all right, so I'm putting just about four pins around to make sure. If you're using a regular sewing machine and you sew around, you'll have some extra kind of seam allowance. You just would want to trim that close to your stitches so that you don't have bulk, added bulk, when you flip this, but I'm using um, the serger so I won't have any extra seam allowance um, on the bottom after I sew it. So, okay, I'm gonna sew the lining and the shorts together at the bottom hem. Making sure that I'm grabbing both layers as I sew around. Okay, so that's one bottom, and then we'll sew the other one right there. Watching out that I'm not grabbing any pins weirdly. So let's turn these and take a look. So this is what we have. We have um, the pants, the main pants that are all put together and the liners that are two separate legs, okay? So when I drop it, this is what I've got. Lining hanging down and the mesh shorts like this. So um, what I need to do now is reach through, whoops, not pull it all the way through, pull the lining up inside the shorts and of course make sure you matched outer seam with outer seam and inner seam with inner seam and I'm not gonna hem the bottom of this I just kind of leave this like this hem so you could top stitch around um, but you can also just leave it as it is so if you're just joining us, I see a few people have just stepped in. We're sewing um, the free mesh shorts pattern from um, the Naptime Creations blog. I'm Emily from Naptime Creations, and I have been doing live sewing every week at 9 p.m. Eastern on Wednesdays. And um, this week, I'm showing you how to make these really fun boy shorts um, that are perfect for summer and just having a good time. Last week, I sewed a boy's tank top, so if you want to make a really just easy tank to go with this that's sporty and still boyish um, you can go ahead and check that out and take a look at that so um, alright so we just this is going to be the bottom okay just kind of this is the hem not hemmed if you wanted to line it up perfectly and top stitch around you can but I'm just going to leave it because it's kind of just a loose look so now what we need to do is we need to join 
we have two separate legs inside these pants, okay? So we need to match and sew the inseam of the liner. And you're actually, you think I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna put right sides together, because we always put right sides together when we sew, and I'm gonna kind of just sew this inside the pants. Now, I think I'm just gonna be able to have to go to the center and then come from the other side because I'm going under and through and I have other things my way. So I am pinning this because it's really slippery and I wanna make sure that I've got things lined up correctly. So there's one side and then I'm gonna flip around to the other side. What are you doing, Rose? I don't want that nut and keep pinning. We'll see if I can sew this in one go or I'm gonna have to stop and come back at it from the other side. Not sure. All right, so there are pictures, a picture tutorial for this on the blog if this is confusing to you, but I've pretty much just match the saddle or the crotch seam of my liner. You can see here how I'm joining the shorts together because they were just two separate pant legs before. So I'm gonna sew um, the right sides together which will mean that the inside of the shorts is a finished look, okay? So we won't have any unfinished seams on the inside. So I'm gonna try and sew this around without getting too twisted. Let's see if I can just go around. So I've got a 3 8 seam allowance going and included on the pattern, and I'm trying to stick with that. And I'm just going to finish here at the bottom and then come back from the other side because it just seems like it's going to be too hard to get all the way around. So I just went to the mid part here and I'm going to um, come back from this side. If you miss the beginning of this and you want to be able to come back and sew this when you have the time, you can go ahead and hit the share button which is below the video and then that will save it to your timeline and you'll be able to come back and watch it whenever you want, whenever you have time to sit down and maybe even sew this as you're watching. Um, and or fast forward through all the slow parts and just get to the good parts um, as you're sewing. But if, yeah, if you hit share, then, then you'll be able to come back and find it easy. It will be on my Facebook page, but sometimes it ends up getting lost in all the other um, things going on. So all right, let's check out what we've got. We should have some lined shorts here now. Ah, oh, it's so slippery. Slippery's good. I wanted these to be slippery shorts. Um, yay, okay, I didn't cross. Not, the legs are in the right spot. No weird, no weird holes. The legs aren't mixed up, but there we go. Okay, so um, we have, this is, we're just gonna leave the bottom finished like this. So it's not really a hem, it's just kind of a loose, the lining tucked under. It will pull up so it won't be hanging out the bottom. Um, and that's just gonna be our edge. We have this side stripe, and now we have to put in some elastic and we're finished. So um, on the uh, blog tutorial, I showed you how to make this so that they were fully reversible even the elastic waistband would look fine on both sides. Today, I'm just gonna put in the elastic waistband so that you can wear the shorts on one side, okay? I'm not gonna um, deal with kind of some of the extra steps to make it fully reversible, but if you wanna go ahead and check it out, you can find out how I did it, and um, yeah, it worked great. Um, but I'm just gonna put in elastic um, regular. So. I've got some stretch sport elastic here, and I'm making this for someone whose waist is about 21 and a half inches. 
So I'm going to cut this 20 inches, okay? So less than his waist, um, and hopefully he's not here. This is not for my son, so hopefully this fits. If not, I'll have to do some tailoring later. Um, once it gets starts getting warm, I switch over entirely to iced coffee. So I'm drinking my iced coffee this morning and enjoying sewing and um, visiting with you all. So it's nice to have some company while I sew. I'm going to turn this into a circle. Okay. So actually, I probably will switch over now to um, my regular sewing machine. And I'm going to, um, let's see, I'm going to use a zigzag stitch and I'm just going to overlap the elastic slightly and zigzag it back and forth to secure it in a circle and make sure it's not twisted, um, but it's just going around. Okay. So now our elastic is in a circle and um, we're going to sew this into the shorts. So we are going to match up the lining and the outer shorts. They're actually wrong sides together now and that's correct, that's what you want. Um, I'm going to match and pin these on the four main seams. So then I can stretch my elastic around to those same spots. But I just want them to be matched up so as I'm going, I don't have to worry about it um, slipping or sliding. It still will slip. It's very slippery material, but I think this lining is going to end up being perfect for these shorts. So again, I'll leave the link to where I got the lining material. So they're looking good, huh? Um, all right, so I've pinned around, and i got to make sure I find the back. So this is the back. The rise is a little bit higher in the back, so that's um, you can always check. Caroline, I'm not using a double needle. For this one, I'm just going to be using a zigzag stitch because um, you can't really... I'm using a dark blue yarn, and you can't really see. So I'm just going to keep it really simple use a zigzag stitch on this and I've been using my um, serger to put most of it together. So I'm going to, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to sew and stretch this elastic into the shorts and then I'm just going to flip it over like this and stitch it around and that's going to be my elastic casing. You definitely could just fold this over, sew it and and thread your elastic through like a casing but again I'm all about keeping it simple and so I'm just gonna stretch and sew it and then fold it over and sew it again so um, but if you are more comfortable creating a casing and sewing and not sewing the elastic because I'm actually gonna sew the edge of the elastic um, then go ahead and do that so I'm finding let's see the direct opposite on the elastic and then I'm going to match that up with the opposite side, or actually the back seam. Okay, and then we're going to stretch this, and I'm going to pin it to the side. So this is where our three hands <laughs> would come in handy. So I'm going to grab it with my mouth so I can pin it where it needs to be pinned. Okay, let's see trying not to get any wrinkles, but there that is. And then we're going to do the other side. If you have someone else in the house who can help you, that's also handy. But all you need to do is just kind of mark where you need to sew it. So I often end up just grabbing it with my teeth and then coming back and repinning it. So, all right. So we've got it um, pinned around. And I'm going to surge around catching the two layers of my shorts, the lining, the outer, 
and I'm going to try and catch the edge of the elastic in it. So um, again, if you don't have time to finish watching this, just hit share to your timeline and then it will be there when you have time to come back and um, finish. I know that this is dinner time and there's a lot of things going on, so it's not always the best time to be watching the whole thing, but you can always save it to your timeline and then you can come back and watch it whenever you have the time or actually are gonna be sewing it together. Okay, so I'm gonna pull from the pin and stretch as I sew. And again, you wanna catch all three layers, the elastic, the liner, and the outer part of the shorts while you are sewing this. So you should be catching three layers. The, the top wasn't entirely even, so I'm kind of evening this up as I go as well. Um, and just leveling it out. So stretching and sewing, stretching and sewing. And you don't want to cut the elastic with your serger blade, you just want to catch it with the needle. So you want to sew close to it, but you don't want to chop the elastic because um, you don't want it to unravel or anything like that. So as you're going around, I'm catching three layers. Get that lining back out there. Okay, we have the lining, we have the main outer. And again, if it's not even, you can kind of trim it as you're going around. And then, okay, so we have elastic now sewn into there. Um, and I'm going to turn this over. And if you have a tag that you want to stick in here, now is a good time so that you know like where the back of your shorts is. I have um, labels for my blog. I have two kinds. I have these that kind of hang and then I have um, these that are just like a, a strip that you sew on. So um, I'm going to put one of the hanging ones in the back so that um, my friend can tell where the back of the shorts are because I do find that sometimes with homemade clothes that um, my kids can't tell where's the back and the front. So I usually end up with like a marker being like, this is the X, this is the back of your pants or the back of your shirt because um, there just aren't the tags. So you're going to fold over matching the seams. Okay, so this is the back because I know I matched this back up um, with this where I joined the elastic. And now I'm going to fold it under and I'm going to stick my tag in here kind of hanging down and I'm going to pin it. Okay? So we've got the tag, that will be the back. I'm going to do the same for the front. I'm just going to fold it under. If you zigzagged your, like here where I surged, if you use the zigzag there, you just want to trim any extra or weird seam allowance that you have. So it's kind of a neat edge because you will see that on the inside. These are not the fully reversible version. This is the, there's a seam on the inside version, but we're hiding it, so it doesn't matter. At least, doesn't matter for me. So the tutorial on the blog does show you how to do this um, with the fully reversible version. And there's just a couple more steps, um, but you can do it that way as well. What do you have? You have an umbrella. Rose is back and she has an umbrella with her. My kids are obsessed with playing with umbrellas. Anyone else have that? Um, Brielle, I don't make my own tags, but I have seen people make their own tags um, by printing, I'm trying to think, like printing even on fabric. I think people used an inkjet or a laser printer and printed on, you can buy like, when I use my, I think people use like, um, on a printer, print on like that iron-on fabric that you'd iron on, like for a t-shirt, you can buy that t the t-shirt iron-on and you could make your own tags of that and iron it on. If you have a vinyl cutter, like a Cricut 
or a silhouette. I have also seen people make tags out of those. Um, I bought my tags um, from a site on Etsy and they're pretty affordable but you can also buy like customized ribbon where it just says like your your name or your brand over and over like Naptime Creations, Naptime Creations, Naptime Creations on the ribbon and then you can trim it and cut it as you go. But these came pre-trimmed and the edges are all finished so I don't have to worry about the ribbon fraying. Um, and I usually like tuck them into a side seam or on the back. I don't always put them on the inside near the skin because um, they're not like the, the softest. Um, but I am on this one just so we can mark the back. Um, easy. Okay. So I've pinned several places around this. <laughs> Shannon, that's probably a good point. I haven't even thought of the luck. I'm just thinking of they knock things over when they're opening and closing the umbrella. Drives me crazy. I need to put them up high where they can't get to them. Um, so I've pinned several places around and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my sewing machine and I'm going to zigzag at the base of where the elastic um, is flipped over and I'm going to stretch and go around that. So I'm going to sew on the right side so I can make sure that I'm doing it evenly, even though my pins, oh, my pins are on the inside. Okay, well, I didn't think through that very well. Hopefully, um, let's see. Hopefully I can make this work. I'll move that pin, see if that helps. All right, so we have kind of a wide zigzag set. Go back and forth a little bit. Make sure my label is still where I want it. And then again, you have to stretch and sew to kind of keep all the layers organized um, as you're going. And if you get a wrinkle or two, you actually don't notice it because it will all be wrinkled when the elastic stretches, but I just try to make it as smooth as I can going around. And I'm trying to sew on the very base of the elastic. Um, where the elastic is folded over. So I'm trying to stay on the bottom of where that is. And just kind of stretching, I kind of use a hand in the back and a hand in the front to pull my fabric as I'm going. Keep it stretched. Try to keep it smoothed out. We're almost back around. Stitch. And then we are almost done. Oh, I didn't quite catch everything in the. I caught half of my tag, not the other half. But I'm going to tuck it under. And I'm just going to sew it in real quick. Thankfully, the thread is dark, so you can't see on the outside. So, okay, here are our finished shorts. Well, that'd be double bad luck. <laughs> they open an umbrella and break a mirror. Ah, we'd really be in trouble. So there you go, there's your shorts. You can adjust the length to how you want. You can, um, you know, the size chart is in the blog post. Actually, I noticed in the shorts blog post, there isn't the size chart, it's in the pants version. So I'll try to, copy that over um, when I'm done here too, but um, so there you go. You have um, some mesh shorts with just, this is just kind of the folded under hem and they look pretty sporty to me. So I know some boys who would like about 10 pairs of these for summer and will never take them off. So you can do with or without the side stripe and 
just go with it from there. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm sewing every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern um, on Nap Time and Creations Facebook page, and I hope you join us. If you have a suggestion for what of my free patterns you'd like to see next, you can leave a comment in the group or on the page. I think next week I'm going to sew the women's um, pajama shorts because I've had a request. Someone's having trouble with the waistband. So I think if I can get my materials organized, that's what we'll be sewing next week. So some sewing for you. If you want to sew for yourself, we'll be sewing um, pajama shorts or lounge shorts. You can, you know, whatever you want um, to call them. And we'll be sewing those next Wednesday night. So I hope you have a great rest of your, rest of your week. Thank you so much for joining me. And um, I'm glad you were around. Thank you. Talk to you later.